friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and this is my sister, Sarah. Hi guys. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make kombucha. And I used to make kombucha for years and years and years, but I had to stop because the way I used to do it was a little too labor intensive and it just didn't fit into my busy schedule. And right now I wanna start making kombucha again. I just don't have the time to do it the way I did it before. My sister found a method about a year and a half ago. Yep where she does this continuing brew system and she's able to fit it into her busy lifestyle. And so I went ahead and decided to go ahead and purchase it myself so that I can have homemade kombucha again and it can fit into my busy schedule. So we are gonna set up the continuous brew system. I'm gonna brew my first kombucha batch and show you how to do that right in here. My sister brought over quite a bit of kombucha that's already done and ready for its second ferment. So we're gonna get that bottled up. We're gonna show you how to do a second ferment. And then she brought over some kombucha that's already ready to go. It's flavored, it's bubbly, and we're gonna do some tasting with you so that you guys can see start to finish. We're gonna enjoy that kombucha on the patio. We're gonna enjoy the kombucha on the patio. Items you'll need to make kombucha, a brewing vessel, organic king sugar, organic black tea, a scoby with some starter culture, some second ferment bottles, and a really good kombucha resource. We'll also list down in the description box all the resources that we are gonna be using today so that if you're interested in trying to make your own kombucha with a continuous brew system, you can do it as well. When I was just beginning to start kombucha, my friend so lovingly sent me this book and I absolutely love it. Hannah and Alex have done a phenomenal job of sharing about the science of kombucha, what it is, as well as multiple different brew methods. And the book has so many great recipes. I'm not really a recipe follower, but I love to look through for inspiration and get ideas. Now, Becky, what's a SCOBY? A SCOBY is a symbiotic relationship of yeast and bacteria. What happens when you put sugar into it, the yeast eat the sugar and create alcohol and the bacteria eat the alcohol and create acid, vinegar. And so if you just left this going in here or in your continuous brew system indefinitely, what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn to vinegar. So we will be making two gallons of kombucha brew. Now, depending on the size of your vessel, you will need to take that into account. But Becky has a 2.5 gallon vessel, so we can make two gallons of brew. Now you do wanna make sure that you are using chlorine free water. That means that if you have a well, you can check and use that, or I have a whole house water filtration system. Um, but if you don't have either of those, then you need to buy distilled water. Now you can't buy spring water or bottled water because that will have chlorine in it. Chlorine will kill your kombucha culture and you want that alive and thriving, so make sure to use distilled water. Now we have some water that's heated up here and we are gonna add in 10 tea bags and we are using 100% organic oolong tea and I did have to look it up, but oolong tea is it's not black tea, it's not green tea, it's in the middle between those two. Now you can use black tea, green tea, or oolong tea for your kombucha. You don't want to use um, a multitude of other teas, but again, that book is an excellent resource because it has all that information and will tell you which teas you should and shouldn't use. We are going to let this brew for 10 minutes and then we're gonna take out the tea bags and we're going to add two cups of sugar. The calculation is five tea bags to one cup of sugar to one gallon of water. So we are doubling that because we are doing two gallons of brew liquid. Now, because kombucha is yeast and bacteria, you do wanna make sure that everything you're using is very clean. So we have a clean spoon and we're going to take out the tea bags and I like to kind of wrap it right around here and just push out all that extra liquid That's a really good idea. Now we are going to add two cups of sugar. So Becky has a half a cup here, so I'm gonna add four of them. I like to keep a measuring spoon in my containers so that I don't have to wash a measuring spoon every time I use one. Now I do turn up the heat just a little bit to make sure that there's enough heat in here to melt the sugar. And now I'm going to stir the sugar into the tea. You wanna make sure that that sugar has completely dissolved. So we dumped the cooled sweet tea into this jar. Now we are doing two gallons of sweet tea, kombucha starter liquid into here. So I need to dump four of these. We basically made a constant. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> so make sure your continuous brew system is off before you start dumping liquid into it. We basically just made a sweet tea concentrate because if we had made two gallons worth of sweet tea and it sat on the stove, that would take all day to cool down and we don't have all day to do this. So that's why it's a lot easier if you make a smaller amount of sweet tea and add cool water to it and then you can just keep going on to the next step. 
So these are the SCOBYs that came with the kit and they came each with one cup of starter culture, which is basically just kombucha. For every gallon of kombucha that you make, you need one cup of starter culture and one SCOBY. So that's why we have two packages. Now this is a live culture. So you do wanna make sure that everything you're using is clean. You wanna make sure you have clean hands, clean utensils, clean dishes. Now look at this beautiful SCOBY. That is a really beautiful SCOBY. If you've ever made kombucha before, that is a really nice one. So we're gonna dump both of these in here and then we're going to take the clean spoon and we're gonna stir again. You always wanna make sure after you've made your fresh sweet tea brew and you dump it in here that you stir so that you're mixing up your starter liquid and your fresh sweet tea. And the SCOBYs are gonna just rise to the top and they're gonna create over the next seven days a new SCOBY that's gonna cover in this entire space. The reason that you need that starter culture or basically just the kombucha from the brew before or kombucha that you buy at the store is because you don't want this to mold. What happens when you add that starter culture is it actually drops the pH of the whole container. That's what helps guarantee you to have a non-molding brew, which is what you want. So Becky's kit came with this lovely cloth cover that has elastic around it. Now we wanna keep this covered so that debris such as fruit flies, flies, um, even just dust particles don't get inside your starter liquid. But it also needs to breathe because if you were to seal this off, then it would start fermenting and building up carbonation inside the vessel. This is not the time and place for carbonation. It will do some because your SCOBY is going to create a seal at the top of this, but it's not an airtight seal. So this allows your kombucha to breathe, to do what it needs to do, get fresh air as needed. So we just pop this on top. This will stay on here until she's ready to do the second bottling. Because this is turning into vinegar, you want to taste it and see where you like it. It is subjective. I like it one way, she might like it a little bit different. So she'll do some taste testing. Now this is the heater right here. This is the temperature gauge. Right now her kombucha is showing about 82 degrees. This is because the water I put in was a little bit warmer and she wants it sitting right at 78 degrees. So we will plug in the heater, and over the next few days, she's going to be checking the gauge once or twice a day and adjusting the heater as needed. Usually I have to adjust my heater about once a month because of just overall temperature changes with the seasons, but other than that, once it's in here, it's ready and set to go, and you can forget about it and leave it for in about nine days. What that SCOBY is doing to that sweet tea is it's trying to turn that sweet tea into vinegar. And what we're trying to do is capture a flavor between sweet tea and vinegar. Everyone might want a different sweetness level because that's subjective. That's one cool thing about making your own homemade kombucha is you can control how sweet or how tart you like your kombucha. When I used to make kombucha, I would just do it in a one gallon jug and it would sit in my pantry cupboard. And in the winter, it could take anywhere between two and three weeks for my kombucha to reach that desired flavor. And in the summer, sometimes it would only take a week. And so it really was hard for me to gauge how much kombucha I needed to make versus how much we would drink. And that is one cool thing about this system. It doesn't matter if it's winter, it's gonna keep that kombucha warm. And if it's summer, it's gonna turn off and it's not gonna heat your kombucha. So it's just kind of a really cool way to have a little bit more control in your kombucha and it's a little bit more predictable so that you know how much to make at what interval that your family will consume at the desired taste profile. When it's reached the desired flavor profile, Becky will take this off, give it a good stir, and then she'll use the spigot and pull out the liquid for the second ferment. So we are gonna go ahead and start doing a second ferment. I have some ginger here. We're gonna be putting ginger in these bottles and we're gonna make a ginger kombucha. This is the kombucha that my sister brought that's ready to go. She just brought some scobies too, but we're not gonna need those. I'm going to pour this in this container because it has a spout and we're going to dump it right into these jars. Now, Becky, why do you like these jars over the ones that I use? They have this flip top. I like very bubbly kombucha. My sister doesn't like her kombucha quite so bubbly. So she just uses ones that have a screw top or mason jar or something like that. But I really like really carbonated stuff, so that's why I wanna have this flip top because it creates a really good seal. Now, another thing I didn't have before when I was making kombucha is I didn't wanna spend the dollar to go buy a funnel. That buy is a funnel. That is the most ridiculous <laughs> thing ever. And I finally bought this and I use it all the time, more than you would think. So I'm chopping the ginger nice and finely. When you're putting stuff, when you're putting flavorings in your bottles that have a small mouth, they don't have a wide mouth, the best second ferment items are either fruit juices 
or something that you can chop really, really small so that you can get them out and it's gonna be easy to clean. Now, when I do my second ferments, I like to put huge pieces of fruit because my bottles have big, nice, wide openings. If you can see, there's little things floating around. Now that is just strings of yeast, totally fine and normal, it's not gonna hurt you. Now the reason for the second ferment is that to add flavor and or carbonation. So I choose just to add it for flavor, Becky chooses it to do flavor and carbonation. And so this will sit like this sealed on the counter for three to four days. And then she'll pop it in the fridge and that will slow down the fermentation process. You could leave it on the counter for indefinitely, um, but it's going to continue to ferment that entire time and change the flavor of it. So if you're particular about the taste of your kombucha, you can taste it every couple of days until it gets to that perfect flavor for you. So my sister really, she's found that three days is perfect for the carbonation level she likes and for the flavor you like. And this will blow up if you don't pop the lid off. Yes. Now that would take probably weeks at least, oh, if yeah, not probably. longer. You do wanna make sure that you're using a strong bottle. You don't wanna go probably to the Dollar Tree and buy a cheap glass bottle because the glass can explode if you create enough pressure in there. So that's just a disclaimer that you have to be a little careful with that. Now, I've never had that come close to happening. I also don't seal mine quite this tight, but it's also why you're going to put your sealed bottle when you're done doing the second ferment in the fridge because that stops that fermentation process. Now, in the winter, sometimes I like the second ferment to go maybe three or four days, sometimes five, because your home is cooler. The yeah. cooler your home is, the longer that second ferment is going to take. Another reason why I and Becky have a heater around our brew vessel because it keeps it at the temperature of 78 degrees, which is ideal for kombucha. And then you also know that your first ferment is only going to take nine days. So now we get to do the taste test. So here's the raspberry. Here is grape from about a week and a half ago. Now I do want to show you that your kombucha is going to grow a mini scoby during the second ferment. Here is the tiny little scoby that it grew. Now don't be grossed out by that. That actually is a sign that your kombucha is super healthy. Now my sister used grape juice for this and when she opened this one, you didn't hear a big pop or anything because this is not super carbonated because that seal is not super tight. But let me show you this one. These are raspberries from my garden that she came over and helped me pick the other day. And listen closely. Do you hear that? That is what you want if you want more of a carbonated beverage. Now on this one, you will want a strainer to strain out the fruit and there will be kind of mixing with that fruit another little scoby. So I do have a regular strainer, but we can't find it. So we're gonna use this lemon press. Can you see the difference in carbonation? The one on the right, this one that had the tighter seal is definitely a lot more carbonated than the one on the left. There is still a little bit of carbonation, but it's quite a bit less. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's one of my favorites. The grape is really good. Uh -huh. I'm super excited that my sister was able to find this system that's gonna be a lot easier for me so that we can have kombucha on a regular basis. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and Becky will read through them and happy to answer any. And don't forget to check out this book as well as the system. They are phenomenal resources. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me again in my kitchen as we showed you how to make kombucha. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and got some value out of it. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up and a share if you know anyone that wants to start getting into kombucha. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Shall we head out to the patio and enjoy the fruits of our labor? Bye guys.